I'm Josh Light with Politicket.com here in California with David Hernandez. He's an independent running for con Congress in District 29. How are you doing today, David? I'm doing well, thank you. <laughs> thank you, David. So tell me, David, tell me about District 29. Well, you know, this is a really a unique situation. When the uh, reapportionment went on, there was a cry for more Hispanic representation in Congress. So this particular district was unfortunately drawn as a specific Hispanic district. So out of 700,000 residents, you have about 500,000 Hispanics. But there are some positive things that came out of that, as you have created the largest group of Hispanic middle class in probably all of California. Other areas, maybe you have more that are, that are lower economic or a little bit higher, but here you have uh, a, people that live in modest homes, drive modest cars, live paycheck to paycheck, and don't qualify for a lot of the social programs that are usually related to Hispanic candidates running for office as, you know, trying to, to get people to vote for them. The district uh, begins uh, north of the San Fernando Valley in uh, the mountains of Newhall and extends southward through the communities of Silmar, Lakeview Terrace, uh, Pacoima, Arlita, Sun Valley, Van Nuys, Panorama City, Valley Village, Valley Glen, North Hollywood, uh, Arlita. And so the area is so diverse, it goes I mean, from the Lakeview Terrace area where you have Hanson Dam, which is a large equestrian uh, community. It has been uh, recreational for, for many, many years. When I'm, I'm 64, when I was 14, I learned to water ski there. All the way down to the NoHo Arts District, which is more, you have a lot more theater, you have a lot more uh, upscale type things. So there is everything that anyone could want. You have two community colleges, uh, Mission College in Silmar with 10,000 students, LA Valley College, and so it, it is really an incredible area and one that, you know, unfortunately for the past 30 years have had the same t uh, rep representative that has really done a good job globally, but when you look at those communities that, that I spoke about, the, the, the quality of life, the, the failed infrastructure, the, uh, the uh, higher than uh, normal uh, unemployment rate, the, when, when they talk about failing schools in LAUSD, they're mainly talking about the schools in the Latino community. So when you have upwards of a 50% dropout rate, it is, it is a community that is rich in spirit and people, but has really been uh, suffering under the lack of uh, having someone actually represent the community. Uh, about 700,000 people. Uh, all, all races, you have one of the largest Filipino communities in the Panorama City area, other than Carson, that's one of the largest. You have Afri an African American community that is really strong. Uh, there was a time when African Americans couldn't own property in Los Angeles, so they moved up to Pacoima and San Fernando, and that's where they, they started buying homes and they started opening businesses. So you have a rich history in the district. And so I look at that as someone who is running as an independent to represent everyone in the district, not just because of the color of my skin that I'm going to represent Hispanics, but and, you know, you may only have 6% African Americans, but 6% of 700,000 is about 42,000 individuals. They deserve representation. So I believe that it is time uh, that this district has someone who is going to represent not only Republicans or Democrats or Green parties, because my support comes from all parties and all nationalities. And how's your... Okay. That was about three and a half minutes. We're looking for something around 30 to 45 seconds. Got it. And just when it, the shorter the video is, the more views you get. So this is, that's okay. kind of what we're looking for. Stay, okay. Stay, next question. All right, all right. So, um, ready? Yep. So how has your experience prepared you to represent people in District 29? Well, I've been a community advocate for 25 years. I've served on a lot of boards. Foundation Board of Mission College five years. I've worked raising money I've for, for scholarships and I've worked with homeless, with at excuse for all that time. Identifying viable nonprofits that, that do an incredible community service but are since they're not politically connected, they're not funded. And so th that's important. And how, how, uh, when you're talking to people in District 29, uh, what fiscal issues are people concerned about? Jobs, the uh, increasing uh, water and power rates, sewer rates. I mean, their 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 monthly bills. That just to, to sustain a middle class uh, lifestyle, they're really feeling the economic crunch, and that's that that's number one. And how how do we create jobs in District 29? Actually, it's very simple. The jobs are already there waiting. I'm hearing all of this about the global uh, uh, depression and uh, recession. 
Uh, LAUSD has an adult education program. That is fantastic. They have uh, a program at Van Nuys Airport, uh, aviation mechanics. They have a 100% job placement rate of students graduating from there in four semesters. These are jobs starting at fifty to $70,000 a year. They cannot produce enough students for those jobs. That's how we do it. We, we, we focus on viable programs, expand them, and the jobs are waiting for them. Now, David, we analyzed your IT score online. It was a really high IT score. Uh, what have you done to improve your online presence? Well, several years ago, I, I was running for an office, and I really didn't know what things like Facebook were or any of those different things. But what I saw from the very beginning was that social media really enables individuals like me who are a grassroots candidate that don't have the big bucks to really uh, get involved in the community at all those events, but also be inclusive of all those events on social media, whether it's Facebook or Twitter. Uh, I've developed a phone app that, uh, that people can download uh, from a QR uh, code. And to be able to use that and to exponentially circulate it throughout the district. And how's your campaign going right now? Well, with 10 days to go, you know, I don't want to be cocky, but I've, I believe in, in from New Hall to North Holly, but I've only met one person voting for my opponent. And, and more often than not, there are people that are voting against him, which is, it doesn't hurt my ego at all. I've given them an option. I've given them a viable option. They like my message. They like the idea of community empowerment, merit-based distribution of resources, and accountability for those resources. They like it. Regardless of party, regardless of necessity, they see that this is their opportunity. And David, where can people go to learn more about you? Well, uh, my website, davidhernandezforcongress.com. Also, uh, they can, on that website, they can uh, see my uh, QR code there. They can use their smartphone and they can go ahead and uh, download uh, the David Hernandez app. There is, uh, I have a presence on Facebook and Twitter. Or they can, from the website, call me direct. I answer my own phone. I'm still, you know, that grassrootsy of a candidate. And uh, more and more, you know, in 10 days, all of these things working together in conjunction with it, it being out in the community, utilizing social media, programs like this, uh, we, are, we are making a difference in spite of what the uh, professional campaign people think that this race was over in the beginning. Thanks for meeting with us today, David. Well, thank you, and you know, and, and I want to thank your audience. It is, this is really vital for uh, candidates that aren't part of a big machine, that want to represent the people in the community, to be able to get this message out uh, and to be able to use that social media and the, uh, the exponential uh, effect of it. So I want to thank you, and I want to thank your, your viewers. So thank you very much. Thank you. All right.